Now as a university guy, I might think it's a useful theoretical exercise to look at projects that could be developed, but it's also very valuable to know that there's some actual projects out there, and I know you highlighted some of them from Wyoming. Yeah. Could you fill us in on some of those details? Certainly. The town of Buffalo owns and operates a hydropower facility. It's at the head of their water treatment plant. They divert water uh, from a reservoir up in the mountains called Tyhack Reservoir, runs down a pipeline, um, then it discharges back into the creek, and then they have a diversion out of the creek into another pipeline, about six miles long, uh, goes to their, their hydropower turbine. This was built in the late 90s. Um, the, they secured a power purchase agreement through the local utility there. It was Pacific Core, uh, now it's Rocky Mountain Power. They, the project was financed through the Water Development Commission. Um, as part of the reservoir project and the hydropower project. The, the nice thing about the Buffalo, the Water Development Commission, allowed them to defer their payment in principle for five years. The reason why they did that was because the way the, the utility Pacific Corps had their rate structure set up, they were willing to pay pretty low dollar, pretty low uh, amount for, for the energy generated. In the first five years, there was a significant jump at year five. So they wanted to defer the payment of their, of their loan five years to really capitalize the increase in rates. It was so successful they were willing to pay the loan off within five or six years and it's just been generating electricity and, and so on, making revenue for the town ever since then. How big is the turbine? It's about a 225 kilowatt generator and they sell all the power they generate to the utility. They're in about year 18 of 20 of the power purchase agreement. After 20 years, they have to reset the clock, go back to the current rates, which are significantly less than what they're getting for power right now. So the power market, that power purchase agreement could once again present a challenge to an existing facility, but at this point they've already got a paid off facility that's operating nicely for the town. That's right. Now the turbine's older now, so there's more operation and maintenance costs, but the, but the loan is paid off. It's still generating revenue. This process, uh, like I said, was done in the late 90s it was fairly time consuming. Uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and the Power Purchase Agreement negotiations took two to two and a half years to complete. And with, now that would take two months maybe? Yeah, with the new recent reform, uh, Hydropower Regulatory Reform Act, they're saying it's potentially up to two months. So significantly streamline the permitting and licensing process. So this type of project, if you could get the right power market, is an approachable project now. Exactly. Exactly right. It's, this fits the bill for the, new, for the new Hydropower Regulatory Reform Act requirements. It's on an existing conduit. They're not interrupting the flows. They're still using it for municipal flows, and hydropower is just an added benefit. And I know you talk about other projects in there, so why don't we talk briefly about Shoshone Irrigation District. I like the fact that it was irrigators coming together to install a facility on one of their canal drops. The Shoshone Irrigation District is sort of a unique facility. It's the only hydropower facility on an irrigation district system within Wyoming. A lot of the irrigation districts around, around the Shoshone Irrigation District have studied up and down the drops and, and are really envious of, of Shoshone Irrigation District. It's a really good deal for them. They were similar situation to Buffalo where they were under a contracted rate with the power purchase agreement and that has expired. The Shoshone Irrigation District is, is seeing some of the same challenges. Uh, they're, they're at the end of their, their power purchase agreement, so they're having to start the process of negotiating it all over again. But once again, a very technically viable project that's proved itself in operation and maintenance is just what they can sell the product for, just like you were with any ag producer. You can grow it, but what can you sell it for? And that may vary over time. That's right. The, the, the revenue generated from the hydropower facility in the Shoshone Irrigation District has really opened up uh, another revenue stream to the district and they can use that revenue stream to one, keep their prices down, uh, selling water to the irrigators, and two, use that money to, to improve their system, you know, structures on their system and, and rehab them. It's really been a great deal for them. So it's a useful example of when a project is viable, it can add value to those already working waters of an irrigation district. That's exactly right.